No Man's Sky has been a game of infamy for many gamers over the past few years, and though 2020 was very difficult for almost everyone, it has been a milestone year for Hello Games. No Man's Sky has gone from mixed reviews to very positive in 2020, came out for next-gen consoles, won the Best Ongoing Game Award for the second consecutive year, came out with many updates this year including the amazing update titled Origins, which we will get into later, and a whole bunch more. Hello and welcome back to Pathfinder Plays, and no, I am not trying to persuade you to buy No Man's Sky. I am, however, trying to promote the game to the best of my abilities, because after seeing this team bring their vision from rags to riches, it truly is inspiring, and they deserve all the recognition that they are getting and more. As the video is titled, this video will be reviewing the year of 2020 for Hello Games and No Man's Sky. If you are interested in a certain aspect of the video, timestamps will be in the description below. Let's get into it. January, they started off by releasing a development update that also included a community spotlight portion of the player's musical creations. This update was minor, but paved the way for more advanced updates in the future. February, they released a huge update called the Living Ship Update. This update was next in line after their previous two free updates, Synthesis and Bite Beat, which released in 2019. The update introduced a new starship, but as the update name suggests, the ship is alive. This was a massive piece of content for all the players because it came with new missions and locations for players to explore, and ultimately discover how these giant living ships came to be. The update also allowed players the opportunity to find, incubate, grow, and then fly their own living ships. Each ship was procedurally generated, all of them unique from one another, and each with their own special internal organs which dictate what abilities they have. This is also the month that they admitted their faults with poor communication with their fan base and noted that they will be more active on social media and also more proactive in releasing smaller updates and patches in between their larger ones. The rest of February and March, Hello Games was dedicated to releasing patches and blog posts to keep the game up and running and also updating the game with weekly missions. In the month of April, No Man's Sky got another big update called the ExoMech Release. This update gave the players another exocraft called the Minotaur Exocraft. This mechanical exoskeleton enabled the players to traverse and explore with a reduced fear of dying. It also provided a way for players to explore previously impervious areas by making them immune to various things such as radioactivity and extreme temperatures. This update brought some quality of life improvements for base building, graphical enhancements, and more. Fast forward to the month of May and the developers at Hello Games did something that was awesome, but given the fact that multiple countries were on lockdown during that time, this made it even more awesome. No Man's Sky enabled crossplay. In a time where families and friends were being kept apart and fresh air and sunshine was a rare commodity, the developers came through and made this virtual universe a little bit bigger by allowing players of all kinds to join together and explore the vastness of the universe. Even today, the amount of games that are truly cross-platform across PlayStation, Xbox, and PC are very limited, so for the developers to do this was a big win. Just to emphasize how hard this was to implement, it took six patches dedicated to crossplay to get it functioning correctly. July 2020, No Man's Sky announced Desolation. Hello Games decided that No Man's Sky was a bit too PG and kind of wanted to promote a sense of fear and danger to your adventures. This makes sense, I suppose. After all, you are exploring the vastness of the unknown universe, oftentimes by yourself or with maybe one or two friends. This update once again added the deep lore of the game and also gave players more areas to explore. Namely, desolated and abandoned freighters that belong to adventures much like yourself, hence the name Desolation. You can enter these ships, find logs which are either handcrafted by the development team or procedurally generated, and find out why they met their demise. The reason I mention these notes being procedurally generated is because that means that every one of these desolate ships you find will be a new story and a new experience. This update gave new rewards in the form of lore to players who explore to the edges of the universe, but not only did the update give lore, it also gave them scavenging opportunities that gave players access to salvage that you can't find anywhere else. 
You may need to fight to retrieve that said loot and story from the ships as upon your arrival you might have engaged the defense system or maybe alerted hostile alien life that is scavenging the ship as well. This update also overhauled the weapon and combat system. Then came September and with it the release of No Man's Sky Origins update. They called it this because it is the beginning of something new. But what exactly is it? That month, they solidified the crossplay between PC, Xbox, PlayStation, and yet VR. This update, they wanted to go back to the core principle of the game, to voyage out and explore the vast unknown. They changed the way planets are procedurally generated, making them more dense and more exciting and huge to explore. You can go up mountains below the depths of the sea and encounter tons of new animals and fauna. Lightning storms, fires, and other hostile weather systems were introduced into the game, and also giant sandworms. Volcanoes, binary stars, UI revamping, and NPCs on planets made their way to the game as well. Billions of new planets were added, and worlds that changed from sunlight to moonlight even exist, and a new scale of buildings were introduced that houses new lore and materials. With this update, Twitter blew up and pages like PC Gamer and PlayStation Europe covered the release. Screenshots of the new worlds and expanses flooded Sean Murray's Twitter feed and he loved it. Because of the crossplay, loved ones were even able to experience touching moments that they couldn't experience in real life due to travel restrictions. As if this wasn't enough, just a month later in October, No Man's Sky was announced to be released to the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox X and S. The game was officially a next generation release and the fans couldn't have been happier. It was a free update, it gave a graphical overhaul, players could keep their saves. The game launched the same day as consoles were released and more. The next gen version gave fuller worlds that were richer and more detailed, increased multiplayer, 4K at 60 FPS for consoles, and greater visuals. It increased the base building capacity and reduced warp speed load times. Crossplay is still enabled for the next gen consoles as well, and there's more. And that's where this year ended for them, on a huge high note. The entire year was good decision after good decision, and each decision fueled by hard work and a clear vision. No game's perfect, no team is perfect, but this is what happens when a team that started with nothing but a dumpster fire, that if they put their heads together and unify in a vision, can build it up into something amazing. This game started as one of the greatest disappointments in recent gaming history, but has become one of the greatest games to, as some would say, ever exist. That is about it for me, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for those who have stuck with me till the end, and if you want more No Man's Sky videos and you like scares, survival, and scavenging, consider hitting that subscribe button, that like button, say hello in the comments, share this video with your friends, and I will see you all in the next one path out.